KTM's Jack Miller, who was impressed by Pedro Acosta's podium charge in the Portuguese Grand Prix, believes he can only wish to have a riding style similar to the rookie in MotoGP. Miller believes he can learn a lot from the young Spaniard after studying the differences in riding styles between his and Acosta during the intra-KTM battle in Portugal. He's not really on top of the bike, he's out of the bike a lot, said Miller. Everything he has is in contact with the ground. It looks that his head is about to touch the tarmac at some point. The style is noticeable, particularly from behind. All I can do is hope to ride that way. Maybe I'm a little less stylish. He's riding the bike skillfully, setting it wherever he wants. That is a good thing. We have improved this KTM greatly in the last 12 months. He's taking full advantage of it. We must now use him as a target in an effort to comprehend his differences and draw lessons from him. Even at 29, I continue to learn from every race. Asked if younger riders are bringing this new riding style to MotoGP, he added 100%. All you have to do is look at Jorge Martin and him. These people are making contact with every ground. My style has changed significantly from what it was in 2016 to what it is today. The paddock has been completely mesmerized by Pedro Acosta's stunning debut in MotoGP. The 19-year-old is the cornerstone of the Austrian manufacturer's present and future because of his high projected ceiling and the unique rider market situation that no other rider has ever experienced. Pedro Acosta is the third youngest rider in the premium category to ever finish on the podium after finishing third in the MotoGP Portuguese Grand Prix last weekend. Only Randy Mamola, 19 years and 261 days, and Eduardo Salatino, 19 years and 274 days, have managed the feat at a younger age than Acosta, who ascended the Portimao Rostrum on Sunday at the age of 19 years and 304 days. Leaving aside the achievements of Mamola and Salatino and assuming that previous athletes from a different era are never truly comparable, it is clear that the rookie's performance was noteworthy due to the exceptional level of competition in the World Championship. No rookie performed as well as the Tech 3 youngster since Marc Marquez arrived in 2013. He has already shown that he is capable of taking the limelight away from well-known riders like Francesco Bagnaia and even Marquez. Acosta, who has only participated in two MotoGP Grand Prix, is well positioned to lead Stefan Piera's team thanks to the stats that support him and the projections that Piera Mobility made about the future. Indeed, based on comments made by those who studied him on the Algarve circuit, it seems likely that he already is. Acosta finished ninth in the main race of his first Premier Class race in Qatar but an overload in his arm caused by the forced movement he had to make to activate the rear height device, which was in a different position than the one he had occupied in the pre-season test hampered him in the final laps. With eight laps remaining, the issue, along with an extremely aggressive riding style that doesn't take great care of the tyres, caused him to drop off the podium. He was the youngest rider to ever record the fastest lap though. Acosta went on the hunt in Portugal once the lever had been changed for the second round of the calendar. During a time when the majority of riders agree that the modern bike's prominent aerodynamics make passing almost difficult, the Shark went on a binge. He started seventh and finished the first lap in the same position, but on the fourth lap, he lost one. After that, he took his time until things had settled down a little before making the attack that saw him pass his theoretical KTM leaders Brad Binder in 6th and Jack Miller in 7th. Acosta then attacked Marquez to move up to 5th, behind Bagnaia, whom he studied for a long time. With four laps remaining, he overtook the current champion. And then, with less than four kilometres remaining before the chequered flag, Maverick Vinales's Aprilia broke down, giving Acosta an easy podium place. When he finished, his rivals could only surrender to the confidence of their predator, who had the child's face and had amazed them with his ability to make the bike bend to his way. I said it before, and I say it again. Pedro is going to achieve great things this year, Marquez stated. He's going to win and take podiums, and who knows he will fight for the title. I have always been lucky to have teammates who have pushed me to be better, and he is no exception, said Binder. I hope that, together, we can take this project to success. An unnamed Tech 3 team member said, 
If you think what he does in the races is impressive, you should see the videos he sends us when he's training. I don't think anyone could lean that much on a 1000cc street bike. Pedro's strength is that he keeps going forward. We are all aware that he has set and is pursuing a goal for himself. He has no interest in politics or games, which is helpful in a company like this. Acosta's importance in the current Piera Mobility Group environment is shown by a number of tests. First of all, his teammate gains from the care he has received on a sporting level. Fernandez says, Pedro is starting to be treated as an official rider for all intents and purposes. They're not going to take away any of the parts that Brad and Jack have because he's earned it. Actually, it took some work for KTM to get Acosta the carbon chassis that he has been running since pre-season and that Fernandez has also had access to because of corporate policy. The Moto3 and Moto2 world champion is not as eager to sign a contract as Pierre would like, but Acosta expresses gratitude for the support and attention he gets each time a microphone is placed in front of him. His contract is tied to a number of conditions, including that it expires in 2025 if KTM accepts his request to join its works team or if he chooses to opt out. He is free from the Austrian manufacturer until 2026. Not only is there no indication of a potential exit at this point, but there is also no certainty that he will stay. Acosta admits, the team is making it much easier for me. On a race weekend, I'm not the easiest person to be around, but the guys are really helpful. My phone wakes me up every day with 20 messages from my engineers, all of which provide a wealth of information that is really helpful to me. It is known that the sporting effort is currently the most important part, even taking priority over the financial one. Acosta is obviously going to make the most of this situation, just like he did with his bike. Regarding Acosta's riding technique, Laverty stated, stand out. The flexibility to position the bike where it needs to be was something we discussed in Moto2 and Moto3. His ability to get off course and onto the dirty part of the track while rear skating is amazing. It was his natural gift for calculation, his ability to figure out how he could do it each time. The Peko one was the best one. He needed to think about the possibilities carefully and came up with a plan of attack. Outstanding skating down inside on the dirty part, the rear. He loses time having to give it up. The pressure on his front tyre is really high. He dives heavily into turn three. With such cleverness, he cuts back and leans it back inside, preventing Peko from having a chance to come back. What are your thoughts? Will Pedro Acosta replace Jack Miller at KTM in 2025? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.